In this tutorial, we're going to cover the symmetry, slice, and shell modifiers in 3ds Max. So let's go ahead and start by making a uh, box here. And these modifiers work on any geometry, so you could use a plane um, or a sphere or, or even a geometry that you construct. So we'll go ahead and turn the edge faces so we can see our edges here. And we'll go ahead and add the symmetry modifier. So the symmetry modifier works by creating a mirror and along that mirror it creates a symmetrical um, form of itself. So if we uh, open up and select this mirror, we can move this mirror. You can see not much is happening because it's a box, but it's basically taking the geometry and then mirroring it along that mirror axis um, and then creating a copy of itself. Now one interesting thing is that it, um, I have the slice along mirror selected and weld seam. So it's actually going to cut the geometry at that mirror and then weld it together. Um, so it's kind of nice. So it's not overlapping the form on itself. It's actually creating one com compound form using the mirror, um, the two mirrored parts. So uh, like all these things, you can use your move, rotate, and scale on the on the mirror. So I can rotate this mirror and start to create a little more uh, of an interesting object. The other nice thing is you can start adding, you know, symmetries on top of symmetries. Um, one important thing to note about Autodesk 3ds Max 2021 is that uh, unless you have the update, uh, it will crash if you put more than one symmetry on top of um, another symmetry. So just make sure you add that update. So yeah, you can start making some pretty interesting forms just by adding symmetries on top of symmetries. Um, the other nice thing about symmetry is you can change the axis. So I can mirror this one, for example, on the Y axis or the Z axis. And you can also flip the mirror. So right now it's using that plane. And if I flip it, it'll mirror on the other side of that plane. So you can just sort of test and see what, um, what you prefer. Um, the next thing we'll look at is the um, slice modifier. So the slice modifier basically takes a section through your geometry. Uh, and this is a really nice way to understand what the form looks like and what the interior of the form looks like. Um, there are a few options with the slice modifier. So you can either refine the mesh, which basically adds a line, a new edged face in the mesh, or you can split the mesh, which basically cuts it into two parts. Or you can remove the top or remove the bottom. So that's really good if you're trying to look at a section through your geometry. You can open up the slice, select the slice plane, and move it. And you can see in real time how it cuts that section. You can, of course, rotate the section. Um, so if you want to cut the section at an angle, for example. And this is great for analyzing and looking at geometry, but it's also good for creating geometry. So you can do something like this, a slice plane. Um, and by the way, I always like when I'm in a sub uh, object here of the, the uh, modifier or a geometry. I like to get out of it before I add another uh, modifier. It's just a good habit to get into and there's some other reasons for that but just um, try to get in the practice of doing that. So for example now I can use another symmetry and it will just continue to use that geometry with the slice applied to it which is sort of an interesting uh, way to actually construct new geometries. So now I have an object with a cavity, for example. Um, the next one I want to look at is the shell modifier. So if I go to shell, this basically adds a thickness to your geometry. So you can see it actually adds some dimension to the, the wall. So if I want to 3D print this, for example, this would now be a solid form. Um, you can add a dimension on the inner amount or the outer amount. Uh, you can add segments, so if you want to have a subdivision there, in case you want to smooth it later, you can add some segments. You can also bevel the edges, so we haven't gone over lines yet, but if I just quickly go over here to my Create tab, go to my Shapes menu, and I just draw, let's just draw a very quick kind of profile for this thing. And then when you're done drawing a line, you just right-click and that finishes it. Um, so that's all you really need to know for now. Um, you can also import these, like a shape from AutoCAD or something, that, or a different program if you want to profile, and it will come in as a line that you can, editable spline that you can use for your bevel. So if we select bevel edges and then select uh, where it says none here for bevel spline and then select our spline, it actually adds that to the, um, the bevel and the edge of that extrusion or of that shell. So that's a pretty nice little feature that you can use. 
Um, another thing, there's a di few different um, ways of creating these edges. So you can see it's sort of bending around the corner here. If I select straighten corners, it'll straighten that out. So it's really up to you, like what you want this to look like, but um, just good to know that that feature is there. Um, there's other things you can do here, like selecting uh, just the new edges or the inner faces, for example, or the outer faces. And that can be really useful if you want to do different materials, um, which we'll get into later. Just to select something, you could detach it and then add a different material to it, or just add a material to the selection. So that's something we can cover later in rendering.